Okay, I thought I'd do a quick walk around video of the Talbot uh, 3 litre 1937 before any attempts at sort of cleaning it up and smartening it up a bit and just show it as it is, as found, if you like. Uh, I'll also uh, put out a request for parts if anyone knows of any spares suitable for one of these, I'd be interested to hear because uh, uh, I don't quite know what I'll need yet but it's always nice to know where bits can be found if need be. What I would like to find there's another one of these headlamp lenses. This is a Lucas Biflex long range headlamp. And unfortunately this one's cracked and it was cracked when I picked the car up. And it's about eight and a quarter, eight and a half inches in diameter. So if anyone's got one of those lurking in the back of their shed, please let me know. Fortunately, this one over here is fine as are the Lucas King of the Road Hooters. Soft and hard tone, one of each. I've got an old Lucas lamp here as well, so that's all good. I'm not sure who bent up the number plate, presumably to tow it at some point, which was quite handy when I needed to winch it on the trailer, but I didn't bend that up, just in case anyone wonders. Like I say, it's been, it was sat in that garage since 1976, so overall it's not too bad. This side lamp here has been crushed slightly, but it will gently straighten up but i'll just have to be very careful so it doesn't split but i have got the the rim and the lens and so on it's missing the little button on the top there a uh, little, little sort of a telltale little red telltale which i believe someone is making those that's what it should look like but most of the car fortunately is there i've put the wheel discs on it which reminds me in terms of bits and pieces i'd like to find I'm missing one of these so if anyone knows where I can find one of these center nuts I'm quite sure what you'd call it uh, the trim retainer nut and please let me know I think the tires have probably seen better days but at the moment all they need to do is stay up I'm guessing these might be remolds. <laughs> Look at, looking at the state of them. Well, I don't think I've ever seen tyres like that before. Well, but basically, it's pretty straight. The bodywork's pretty good on it. It's, it wasn't entirely dry, I don't think, in the garage. I think there must have been some dampness at some point. And on here, I'm not sure if the paint was stripped off or someone spilt brake fluid. But, I mean, the car doesn't have hydraulic brakes, so... There wouldn't have been any need for brake fluid near it, unless it's had a drip at some point and it's just corroded slightly, but it's only surface corrosion, but I'll have to try and tidy that up. But I'd prefer to get away without repainting any panels on it, if I can sort of spruce it up in the oily rag way of doing things, we'll have to see. So, these I think will clean up better, they're not going to be immaculate without re-chroming, but if you get into re-chroming then you're into repainting and everything else and it gets, becomes very expensive so I'll have to see where we go with that but I think the priority initially will just be to get it to run and see how it sounds and then take, a, take it from there there's the last tax disc in the window I have got some of the older tax discs from the 1960s back to about 1959 I think so I'll dig those out and have a look at those in a bit but overall, she's in pretty good order, for the age of car especially. The fact that it's been sat out of use since 1976, which I think was when the last MOT ran out, as well as the tax disc. It's quite a substantial car. One or two things I'm not that keen on. Somebody's put these on plastic indicators in the 1960s looking at them. They're not nice. I think they might have to go as long as they're only small screw holes. If it's the type of lamp that cuts a big hole, you have to cut a big hole in the body, then it could be a bit more problematic to disguise where they've been mounted. But if it's just a couple of screw holes, then it shouldn't be too bad. And equally, I mean, these wing guard aftermarket stop and tail lights, they probably offer a little extra illumination, but I wouldn't have thought they were much better than the original lamps, which are here, which I think look a lot nicer and of course we've got the nice proper old number plates which I have a bit of a 
a bee in my bonnet about when I see cars with the wrong number plates on. These are separate cast letters, the earliest style of the four, and the little tail going on there. We've got the Talbot badge, and we've got this tapering trim that comes down the back of the boot lid and down over the spare wheel uh, hatch. We've got rear corner bumpers, that one needs straightening a little bit, but it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Someone's had to go sealing the rear windows. But these are the sort of things that happen on cars over the years. The important thing is that most of it, most of it is here. The roof's good. Gutters are good. Often on old cars the gutters rot out. But this looks pretty good in that respect. Uh, if it had been left outside you'd expect the gutters to be rotten and where the water tracks down you'd expect a hole here and probably a hole here as well going all the way down here because cars where they've got separate wings with bolt on with the beading in between they often rot out behind here but this if you lean on it and tug on the wing it all seems pretty solid which is a good sign have a quick look in the boot now the old car mechanics magazine fob remains of an exhaust. Not the prettiest thing I've ever seen. A few bits and bobs in the back. An old Lucas wiper motor. Maybe the one for the car, I'm not sure. I'm assuming these are for the front bumper. Uh, the front bumper is something I need to sort out because it's been taken off and a part of the mounting appears to be broken. I've got the original rope pulls, I think, that go inside the back. And wants to get out gracefully. Got another motor there. But this all just wants tidying up. Like I say, I've not made a start on cleaning it up yet because I thought I'd just record it all as it is. And then as it gradually gets cleaned up, let's have a quick look under the bonnet. The engine, oh, I've got a little boot anti freeze transfer in the window. The engine is a 3181cc side valve six cylinder engine. Let's have a quick peek under here. I've removed the dizzy cap and there's a Bakelite assembly that goes on the top of the engine that the plug leads run in. I've taken that off because I'm going to make up a new set of leads for it. This radiator contains boots antifreeze do not drain and the boots in the window there, which is quite nice. We've got a Desmo screen washer bottle, which is a nice one. Desmo Kai Gas Green Wash, screen wash. That's nice. That's probably 50s, possibly 60s. So it's not in period with the car, but it looks it looks the part. And we've got the chassis plate down there. And all this is nice and solid as well. It's all pretty beefy. According to the Sunbeam Talbot and Alpine Register, who've got, they've got access to all the original build records. The order for this was put in in October 1937 and it was delivered to Max of Bournemouth early in January 38, which is the supplying dealer transfer that's on the dashboard, which I'll go inside afterwards. But yeah, this is the underbonnet view. This all appears to be present and correct. Got a nice shell oil filler cap there. There's the water pump back there. Heaven only knows what that's like. The aluminium cylinder head, which looks like it would be a world of joy to try and get that off if I needed to take that off because we've got steel. Uh, studs, threads with nuts on and uh, anyone who's been around old cars will know how steel and aluminium get on when they're sort of uh, in close contact with each other for any period of time so that could be fun but hopefully we won't have to do that anytime soon I think some of the hoses are probably past their best Like I say, overall, all the important bits appear to be there. It doesn't appear to have been messed with. 
this one's a nice clean and a gentle recommissioning. I'll probably do the same as I did on the Morris 8 in a recent video, go through it all, spin it over to get the oil around it, possibly give it an oil change first. I'll need to check the oil, see what it looks like. And then just see if we can coax it into life, because it'd be nice to hear it run. Like I say, six cylinder, 3.2 litre, so it would have rolled along quite well. And even though it's not pure Talbot, as the cars from three years before would have been, and uh, this was two years into uh, Roots Group ownership, so a lot of this, like I said, is Humber based. So it might give a few more opportunities for finding parts if I ever need to find some. And, uh, some of the vintage guys, I think they, their view is that Talbot stopped in 1935 once Roots took over. Um, which is fair enough, I suppose, but it doesn't worry me. Let's go and have a look around to the side. Always this extremely long bonnet up single handedly. Like I say, I took the plug lead assembly off here. That mounts along the top of the engine. Got a nice array of KLG spark plugs in there. I know someone will be swiping those off me for his display if I'm not careful. KLG F50s. I don't know if there was ever a workshop manual made for this car. I've got the handbook. But uh, if, uh, if there's any workshop manuals out there, I'd be interested to hear. And again, it's all nice and solid, even where the battery sits. It's not rotted out because sometimes when the when the battery leaks, if they leak, it can lead to corrosion here. And often when the battery's in there, you don't see it until it's too late and you to remove the battery one day and you find there's a big hole underneath. So that's all good. We've got a separate chassis, which is all nice and substantial looking. A big old, I think it's a Zenith carburetor. Looks very similar to the one that's on my Comma truck, actually. I need to have a look into that. But at least it's nice and easy to get at. Everything's quite well laid out, and sometimes you've got the panel up here, and it makes it quite hard to sort of delve within the engine bay, but this, it's all quite nice and airy, and even on a dull day like today, it's quite easy to see everything and get at it. So. That's all quite encouraging. So that's, uh, I'm going to have a quick look inside, I think. It's got quite a large sunroof as well, and I know it opens, I won't try it because uh, I always think if I open it, it might not close again. But I have seen it open and I have seen it closed, so I know that does work. The doors all shut nicely. Let's try one of the back ones while I'm at it. That's usually a good test for any car. If the doors shut well, that's usually a good sign that the structure's in fair order. It's when the doors start dropping when you open them, that's when you've got problems. Let's whiz that open. Suicide type doors, rear hinged. And one thing that really appealed to me was the condition of the interior, because often you find these old cars, and even if the bodywork's in pretty good order, as this one is, bar a few dings, um, sometimes the interiors, the, the mice have been in there, or it's been damp, and so on. But this one appears to have survived well. Somebody's painted over the original Bakelite in the window surround at some point, but that will clean up. It even comes off with your nail, so that's the sort of job you can take these off and do them in front of the fire of an evening. So I might do that over the winter, actually. Just whiz those off. And just scrape it off. I'm not sure why they would have painted over those, but uh, those will come up nice. The door trims are good on it. A bit grubby through years of just use, but they're in good condition. That's the main thing, so nothing will need replacing. Just cleaning a bit of TLC and that will all be good. If I just prop the... This one's had seat belts in it as well, which I'm not sure we'll bother with those. But just prop this door open on a trusty block of wood can never have too many blocks of wood around so yeah, so those are the front seats and again the windscreen surround and all the window surrounds have been painted over in grey paint but that'll clean off nicely I'll just clamber aboard and here we have all the dashboard 
It's a very small rear view mirror, but it does work. You can just about see see through there. We've got the opening windscreen, which still winds open. I won't go too berserk, but it does work. Considering that's not seen oil probably 60, 70 years. There's a supplying dealer label I was referring to. Motor Max of Bournemouth. Some of their buildings still exist, which is quite nice. Um, we've got that's obviously for the, the later uh, windscreen washer pump, which I mean technically you don't need it when you've got an opening windscreen, if I remember right. And uh, it looks a bit 1960s, but it could be worse. I'm not so keen on this. I think that's probably something to do with the flashing indicators that have been fitted. Again, not the nicest things, so it may be that I keep flashing indicators, but just put some more subtle ones on, or build them into the side lights on top of the front wings, possibly. Rather than those horrible plastic things. There's the speeder with a clock, which is in really nice condition. You've got the Lucas lamps switch, and an and ignition switch in the middle. And we've got a combined cluster here, with Talbot in it. So we've got the petrol gauge, oil pressure, amperes, and the water temperature. The steering wheel is adjustable for depth in and out. On here, I don't know if we can see it, but the horn button, you've got loud, there, and soft, there. So if you press one side, you get a soft horn, loud, you get the louder horn. And that would have been the that would have been for the turn signals, the semaphores. This here is the adjustable uh, damping that the car had. I've not investigated that at all. I'm not quite sure what system that is. This is a nice aluminium piece. No plastic rubbish here. Thank you. The ashtray looks very similar to the sort of thing you'd see in like a 50s Morris Minor. And that's stuck open at the moment, so that's going to need a little bit of gentle persuasion. Let's have a look here, over here. We've got the invincible Talbot badge on the glove box again. Inside, all manner of goodies. There's the original tax disc holder, Desmo. And there's the front side light. I say I've not found a little red telltale yet, so that may have disappeared. But I can't imagine that'll be too much of a problem. But we've got all sorts of bits and bobs in here. I'm assuming that's for those retaining nuts for the, uh, the full width wheel trims. An old aero style pressure gauge, I don't think that's anything to do with it. We've got that, I'm not quite sure where that goes. But it looks like it belongs. Like I say, I've not made any attempt to start tidying this up yet. This is just as found. So, uh, I've not rooted through here. I will go through it all and box things up properly. Holtz clear sealer, transparent window seal. Someone's obviously had a leak at some point. Someone's had a, one of those little tubs of ice cream that we used to get at the cinema in the 1970s. That's the, uh, the budget T-handle for opening up the spare wheel compartment at the back. So that'll all clean up very, very nicely. Nothing's had a go at eating it, which is quite nice. There's the uh, opening mechanism for the roof. And the headlining is actually really good. Again, 60s motor accessory enthusiast has put a, an extra interior light in here, which that'll definitely have to go. And uh, got the sun visors, which are in nice condition. In fact, the entire headlining is good. If I just spin around, you can see it's it's all very pleasant indeed. There's the sunroof. Let's see if we can clamber in the back. Remove the trusty block of wood. But before I forget, I noticed that at some point someone's put these house carpets in here just to protect the old carpets or to spruce it up a little bit. But the original carpets are all here underneath and they've actually survived quite well. I was really pleased to see when I moved this manky old piece of carpet out of the way. It's still got the original 
whole heel mat which is really nice so even if one day new carpets had to be made for it this could be taken out and put into a new set of carpets which is quite encouraging so that's really nice so even though these carpets are hideous looking at the state of them they've been in for a long time and they've done a great job of preserving what's underneath uh, just wants a, a really good clean obviously there's the handbrake this was on the fully on position when I went to pick the car up but fortunately it just released perfectly which is the beauty of mechanical brakes as opposed to hydraulics and disc brakes and all these modern things <laughs> the dashboard it's, a, it's quite attractive the steering wheel's in nice condition it's not all chewed up or cracked or anything like that that survived really nicely this baker light's in good order it's, it's all good stuff let's clamber in the back again we've got the original carpets in here which aren't perfect but they're original and that's what we like and again this stuff this gray paint will gently scrape off the bakelite window surrounds but the important thing is they're not cracked so i have to be very careful taking those off because they do crack very easily just ask anyone who's got a ford pop and they'll tell you all about cracking bakelite window surrounds here we are in the, the rear compartment which is an extremely comfortable place to be here's the front bumper by the way it's stashed away in here safely and we've got a nice view of the driver's compartment looking down that long bonnet and the seats the old leather seats are just lovely I'm not quite sure what's going on with these uh, seat belt arrangements, but I think we'll probably lose those. Someone's uh, rerouted some temporary wiring to this interior lamp up here. That's got a slight crack in the lens as well, but it doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, some of this wiring we'll probably want tidying up, and we've got a switch on the B pillar over there. So it's had one or two minor tweaks over the years but for its age i mean what in 1937 so it's 80 plus years old now i think we can forgive it a few non-standard items the remains of the original rear window blind is still here as well which is operated by a string which goes up here into there and it goes around above here and pops out there on this little plastic ring and you pull that and that, that operates the rear window blind. I'm amazed at the condition of the roof. There's a few little moth holes in it here and there, but nothing, nothing I'd worry about. This probably wants just to be lifted back up again a bit, but the material itself, like a really nice cloth, has survived incredibly well for 80, 83 years. These, I suspect, well, they might be original. Maybe someone can tell me, because there's those rope ones are in the boot. I mean, are these the correct ones? I'm not entirely convinced. But the other ones would have required a mounting at the top and a mounting at the bottom. I can't see any signs of screw holes, so unless someone's replaced this piece here, perhaps these are original. You certainly need something to pull yourself out with. In terms of history that comes with it, the, uh, the Talbot Club were able to give me a fair bit of information. Some being told that Alpine Register they were able to give me quite a lot of build information in terms of when it was laid up, when it was built up rather, delivered to Max of Bournemouth, etc. I've got quite a few early tax discs going back to about 1959, early MOT certificates and a couple of the, the old buff brown logbooks. It's not currently registered, DIU 470, but with the paperwork that I've got and the records that the club has, which I will be joining, um, it should be possible to reunite it with its correct registration, which will be nice, because one thing I'm not very keen on is reissued registration. Sometimes they're unavoidable. If some owner previously has uh, removed the registration, which does happen, or if it's been lost when DVLA was first set up, or DVLC as it was when the... Uh, when it was all centralised, the vehicle records were centralised in the late 70s, early 80s. A lot of cars that were just left in garages were never re-registered and put on the new system. So 
uh, they then lost their original registrations but hopefully with the paperwork I've got it should be possible to reunite this one with its registration but even here even these dog legs where cars often rot out it's all good and proper you, know, you could jump up and down on these running boards if you wanted to if I was uh, given to such exertions again it's good here even though the beading suffered a bit because it's not been exposed to 40 years of torrential rain it's all, all in good nick nice cast aluminium fuel filler like I say these, these things jar a little bit so I don't see them staying for too long but again everything just shuts that's how you want a door to close perfect let's just try this one Yeah, I don't think we can complain about that one too much. Here we go again. More bits and bobs. Bo box of miscellaneous junk that I've just sort of accumulated inside. Put in there for now. This, I think, is part of the front bumper. I've not quite figured out the bumper arrangements yet. But part of it has snapped off at the end there. Someone's been a bit cack handed it should extend past this loop this hump rather all the way to there but one end has been snapped off I think the other piece is around somewhere so I might have to get someone who knows what they're doing to weld that up properly but at the moment the only thing that I know I'm missing or that I need to find is the headlamp lens like I say the, the Lucas biflex lens with this particular shape these ribs like a smiley face on there so I definitely need to find one of those and like I say the proper large retaining nut for the full width wheel trim is missing and what I'm missing one of those unless it turns up in the boot somewhere which I've not seen it yet but I'm assuming it's missing one again even if you look down here This is gunmetal grey. It's like a, it's almost like a metallic, I suppose. But it should, it'll clean up, it'll clean up a lot better than this. Um, the only awkward bit is the top of the bonnet, like I say. Most of it is okay. There's a few dings going on, like here. It's been dinged inwards, but it's all proper metal. So even someone like me can make that a lot better if we take this off we've got a slight it's pulled out slightly there so that one's coercing back into place but some gentle tapping can reap great re rewards so the rear tire is looking a little bit second hand good year deluxe all-weather tire made in england showing plenty of evidence of having been sat with no air in it for several decades so I don't think they're reusable somehow again they could be they could be remolds they could well be let's have a look on the other side to see how appalling the tyre is there it's the same again is it going to focus probably not Goodyear Deluxe All Weather Made in England again this wing has got a bit of a dink in it here not going to tap out but overall she's pretty good there's a split here that someone has made a vain attempt at just improving but I'm sure we can do better with that there's a bit of a pull on this running board someone's yanked that or caught it on something but that will bash out, I think, with some little bit of persuasion. So I'm not too worried about that. So overall, I think she's got a lot going for her. These, these terrible things will have to go. They just look like warts. 
and people screw those indicators on they just look like some sort of a, a growth it doesn't look good at all um, but yeah that's the uh, the 1937 Talbot 3 litre I'd like to thank the people from the Talbot clubs who've been in touch with sort of uh, advice contacts and uh, just basic information on the car that's all very much appreciated and welcomed like I say, I'll finish making up the leads at the top of the engine and we'll see if there are any signs of life it's a 12 volt battery on this car so it will be so it's a 12 volt electric so that makes life a little bit easier I'm looking forward to seeing what it runs like there's not much in the way of an exhaust on it so it might be a little vocal but I'm not too worried about that so I uh, hope this video was interest. Um, if you've not seen the collection video yet, I'll include a link to that at the end of this particular video. Uh, that was quite good fun extracting it from the garage where it had been since 1976. And uh, if this kind of thing is what you're interested in, please uh, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel because there'll be a lot more videos like this on the Talbot, on the Morris, the Dodges and uh, many more things hopefully. So. Uh, Thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, there'll be more videos along pretty soon hopefully. Thanks for now, bye bye.